Hello, I'm Mosk Zhang uh, from Huawei. Today I will talk about the performance tuning on Huawei Cloud's Zen platform. Uh, this talk contains four parts. First, I will briefly introduce Huawei Cloud's application scenarios, and uh, then I will talk about three typical performance improvements that we have done. Uh, Huawei Cloud Scenery supports around uh, 100 cloud services, including public cloud, private cloud, and NFV. Uh, during years of cust customer services and uh, practice and maintenance, we received many performance improvement uh, requirements, such as SAP, HANA, etc. They are usually very different from each other. First, let's come to SAP HANA. SAP HANA is an in-memory, large-scale database management system. It's about large-sized servers and large-sized virtual machines. And the CPUs and the memories, they are not over-committed. This means that CPUs and memories are just owned by guests uh, exclusively. They are not shared. Uh, among these queues. Uh, there are several performance indexes we need to pass to get the certification, uh, such as performance barriers and uh, benchmarks, etc. I will take uh, performance barriers for, uh, for example. Uh, it requires that the performance degradation in the hypervised platform should not be too much compared to physical machine or compared from one situation to another. Uh, because it's large size uh, virtual machines, uh, there are many technologies for large size physical machines, but some are unavailable or partly unavailable for virtual machines, such as Numa. So the first idea come to our mind is to expo expose these technologies to virtual machines. And uh, then, uh, as most uh, performance tuning best practice uh, have been saying that uh, we have to save the cost of the exit because the more time the exit takes, the more that the performance get the great idea. And uh, last, we should do the resource isolation. It's quite simple. Uh, next, I will talk about uh, these three approaches. Among uh, the technology that uh, used on physical machines, why we choose L level three cache affinity? It's because that we, during performance test, we found that uh, a strange scenario that the <coughs> HANA server and client thread, they always run on the same vCPU. Uh, th this means that each of them could ju just utilize a half of a single vCPU. And uh, after debugging, we found that it's because the Linux scheduler inside the guest they could not sense the multiple scheduled schedule domain. Uh, multiple scheduled domain means that if the VCPUs they have the same cache affinity, then they could be scheduled on the uh, restricted domain that like a uh, restricted uh, load balance. So the such feature is not exposed to the guest, so the guest uh, could not realize which uh, scheduled domain to to use, and the server and client threads they just uh, run on a single VCPU. So the solution becomes quite simple. We just refer to the Intel uh, specification document, and. Uh, uh, add some branch in CPU ID in the hypervisor. 
to support the level 3 cache affinity. And then the server and plant threads, they could uh, not just run on one VCP. So, uh, question, was that, a, was that a microcode update as a part of solution? Uh, or is that an update to the hypervisor? <laughs> Would you please speak a little slower? Yeah, you were, the solution was to present CPU topology to the guests, right? Yes. How did you do it? Uh, CPURD in VMS.C. CPURD in VMS.C? Yes. Changing the in, hypervisor. Ch changing the hypervisor codes. So that means you have to sort of recompile it and before, right? Yes. Okay. <coughs> And uh, how to save the cost of VM exit? VM exit con contains many kinds of there are many kinds of VM exit, and uh, we found that in SAP HANA, that uh, one of the most uh, time-consuming VM exit is caused by clear TS instruction. Clear, clear, clear TS means that uh, when the task switches that this the bit TS in register CR0 is accepted and uh, which is to save the FPU context. But saving an FPU context is quite time, time consuming. So um, we just uh, use the technology of the X, X X86 uh, CPU uh, just set the TS bit in the register that, that's called CR0 underscore guest underscore host underscore mask. And uh, when it's set, the, the, the guest could uh, ju just stay, uh, the CPU just stay there and will not get uh, the message whenever the guest uh, get. Uh, uh, thread the switches afterwards. <coughs> so, per, uh, and Sorry, uh, I, I, I've got a question. Did you make any changes in the hypervisor um, FPU code for that? Uh, it's quite similar to the KVM solution. We did change uh, uh, some codes in the hypervisor. <coughs> Uh, oh, you mean the FP codes, <coughs> right? Yeah. No, we have, haven't done that. But simply clearing the mask will not cause the EMX to happen, but uh, I think they're using lazy FP inside the hypervisor. We basically might be messed up. <laughs> so the point is, if you don't change the hypervisor to you algorithm, then then between the first schedule and the next FPU instruction, you, you'll get the wrong break state. Yeah, but if you feel BCP it's a particular PCP. Yeah. Oh, right, if it's an in fine then. Yeah. Uh, another point in SAP HANA, the CPUs, they are pinned to each PCPU uh, one to one. There will be no uh, VCPU switches anymore. So in this scenario, that uh, uh, even no more VMS otherwise we have. Uh, another VMS that time is time costing, we found that it is PLE. As we have told that the VCPUs are all pinned to PCPUs one to one. So PLE here is useless, but uh, culturally it's harmful. So we just disable it. And another performance improvement, we found that Zen use the ticket spin lock as the fundamental spin lock technology. And, uh, as we know, that there are about three spin lock technology called Ticket, CIH, and CS. And uh, Ticket 
things will not when it comes to the large scale the scenery that uh, because it uses global shared arrival and uh, it has to synchronize uh, caches so risk conditions are serious and uh, the performance the creation is quite a lot so we change it in MCS or to MCS in spin lock uh, the last one is resource isolation this is quite simple uh, the second scenario is VDI cloud it's desktop cloud it's quite different from the former one HANA uh, HANA has large size of those machines but VDI cloud they have large amount of small size of those machines and the CPUs and memory they are limited <coughs> Uh, there is the performance demand is that it, uh, it's called the VSI density test, which means that each each guest that uh, runs the test inside it, they have all they have to all pass this test as to reach as many guests as possible on one server. Uh, as we have talked in, in this situation, because the SPUs are overcommitted, so we just enable PLE, uh, which is uh, just the opposite to the HANA situation. And uh, we uh, improve the guest's memory and C C CPU location. That's called that's new mark. But we separate it to uh, two terms called uh, post new mark and uh, guest new mark. First thing one means that we just initialize the uh, replace the memory and CPU when the guest just gets started uh, according to the first lemma topology. And the guest lemma means that uh, when the guest has been started up, then we just uh, uh, tell tell it which nodes uh, is pinned to which sockets of the CPU when the guest has more than one node. We know that, that the CPUs are all pinged, not one to one, but a, a group to a group. Uh, we developed a demo that's called Zen Numa D to, uh, to intelligently to manage this. Okay. Uh, because the VCPUs are committed, uh, there is not only the committed between the menu and the menu and the main zero can also affect the performance. So we limited the many process uh, management processes resource cost. Uh, for example, just uh, uh, limited the human resource. Uh, we re remove some unused devices and slow down the some devices' harmless frequency when the device is not sensitive to the uh, harmless frequency, such as <coughs> mouse, etc. And uh, because in VDI cloud, uh, there is almost the guests are almost uh, windows, so we expose the feature hub B to guests. Okay, as we see, uh, these two scenarios, they are very different, so the solutions are also different. Here comes the last one, scenario three, uh, it's called class, Cloud Classroom. Cloud Classroom means that uh, it's a classroom that uh, all students have one screen monitor inside, uh, uh, in front of uh, uh, each each one, but they just uh, use one server. It's like a small size the VDI cloud. Mm. The performance demand is quite different. It requires the class change to be as fast as possible. It means that we have to uh, get a rapid shut down startup image replacement operation of the uh, guests con concurrently. 
plant. So we get uh, the approaches both outside and uh, inside the guests. Also, we can see can uh, see what we have done outside the guest. Outside guest, we we found that when we concurrently start up the guests, um, the Zen store becomes the bottleneck bottleneck mm. because it has poor concurrent forms. The it uses transaction right. Transaction right means that it could be disrupted by other rights. When it's disrupted, then it will do retry. And uh, when too many guests run together, they would interrupt each other. Then the situation is quite serious. So we uh, use a locked right to improve this. And meanwhile, at first, at first we did a weak right. Weak right that means that it could not interrupt the transaction. Um, it's quite, uh, it's not a general solution because the weak right we are used to uh, get embedded <coughs> information from guests means like a CPU usage, memory usage. Uh, we use that store to get the expand embedded information, so we change that to quick write. Uh, which version of Zen are you using? Because in Zen 4.7, Zen 4.8, um, the OCaml Zen store uh, daemon was updated to fix this problem. <coughs> we, we encountered exactly the same in Zen server. Um, the, uh, the thing with the upstream was essentially to replay the transaction on top of it. So when, when you get a transaction conflict, you replay it on top of the, trans, um, on top of the, the new write. And that, so one of the tests the Zen server does is the net times boot 1,000 versions of Windows, because that's common in our BPI case. We were seeing, uh, we were seeing things that used to take five minutes dropping down to about 10 seconds. So uh, then later the CZ still did the same thing. So you ought, ought to investigate looking at uh, the Zen store demon from a newer version of Zen because this particular thing we think we've already fixed on the screen. Okay, uh, it's because we we are using Zen 4.1.2. We uh, realized this feature for uh, that year. So maybe we get the, the same thing. Okay, uh, then we come to the solution that inside the guests. We found that the uh, IO rewrite operation time cost is the bottleneck here. So physically, we use memory disks instead of normal disks for the virtual machines <coughs> to get the I.O. rewrite operation time cost less. And uh, software, we expand the number of round table to improve the, this I.O. performance. Uh, and uh, why we use memory disks, there are uh, one more reason. Because in cloud classroom, that uh, uh, during each class, the information, the modification that students have, have done in the last class will be not saved to the next class. So the modification we do not care at all. So we use memory disks and use uh, we call the link clone technology to run the uh, machine, virtual machine as fast as possible. So as we don't care about the image modification, so we also do not care the image uh, damagement. Uh, so we just destroy the virtual machine rather than shut down. So you can see the incinerator 3, we all did the management work. 
rather than the uh, it's quite high level. It's different from the last two scenarios. Uh, I just talk about three typical scenarios here. There are many other scenarios we have done to do the performance improvements. Uh, we the main idea is just to do some general improvements according such as performance tuning best practice and uh, we have to do some uh, creation job to create something or intensively disable something like disable PLE etc. Mm. So uh, that's all. Any question? Yeah. Um, for uh, identifying the kernel loss uh, conditions, right? Performance uh, bottlenecks. How did you find out? Like, did you use any flame graph or profiling? What tools did you use? Can you dig into details? You mean how to find out the performance? Uh, yeah, like you, you, you should have some, done some degree of performance analysis, right? What are the tools did you use? Like, did you profile or did you use any flame graph, graph analysis or kernel events, zen events? Uh, different situate, different scenarios have, maybe have some diff different tools to test the performance. In VDI, we have VSI test, test and such as spec what? Uh, and uh, Hana yeah, have yeah, that one, yes. Hana have its many several performance indexes. They just run the uh, test cases inside guests. Inside the guests? Yes. Yes. Thank you.